Scotland. The country you love needs you. To get that much needed change of scenery. To follow in the footsteps of our ancestors. And get lost in the stories of our past. To enjoy the welcome we're famous for in ways that make us feel more reassured. To dine in or out. To taste our world famous produce as fresh as it comes. To get swept up and explore. To connect with something other than Wi-Fi and reconnect with the people you love. We can't promise you the big shows we're famous for yet, but when we do, there'll be fireworks. All we need you to do is enjoy all that we have to offer. Only in Scotland can travelling so little make such a big difference. Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you're enjoying your day on Planet IMEX so far. Uh, my name is Richard Allchild. I'm the Senior Sales Manager here at IMEX and I will be your moderator for the session today. Uh, today you'll hear inspiring stories from our panellists on how events from around the world are accelerating action for the UN Sustainability Development Goals. We can all play our part in making our industry much more sustainable and inclusive. Firstly, a very special thanks to our sponsor Visit Scotland Business Events for their support of this session. Scotland has been changing the world for centuries. Their ideas, innovations and pioneering spirit have shaped the modern world, supported by a world class array of conference centres, stunning hotels and international travel infrastructure. Scotland is a legendary destination for international conferences, meetings, incentives and exhibitions with unrivaled, unrivaled legacy potential. And if you haven't been, it's such a beautiful place. Make sure you check out their beautiful scenery and those castles. So now just for housekeeping, um, I do encourage you, you'll see there's a chat um, alongside the session, so do use that as much as you like. Uh, but there will be a Q&A at the end of this session, so please ask any questions using Slido. You'll see uh, where to ask questions with the little blue bar um, to the side of the channel uh, of, of the video session here. And uh, we will have a couple of polls um, throughout this session as well. So um, when those go live, you, you'll see them go live on your screen. And so please do participate in, in those polls um, when, when they come up. OK, I'd now like to introduce you to our amazing panel today, uh, who will be telling us a little bit more about how we can achieve a sustainable, equitable, equitable future for all. So firstly, we have Courtney Lohman, Director of CSR for PRA. And Courtney is the immediate past chair of the EIC Sustainability and Social Impact Committee. Welcome, welcome, Courtney. Next, next we have Yaomad Siddiqui, Vice President of Corporate Sustainability for MGM Resorts um, and the current chair of the EIC Sustainability and Social Impact Committee. And now I'd like to hand you over to Mariella McIlreith, who is the VP of Sustainability and Industry Advancement for the Events Industry Council. Welcome all. Thank you so much for having us here today. We really appreciate the opportunity to talk about a topic that is a great passion for all of us, and that is really how we can help accelerate towards the sustainability and social impact. Um, so just a quick note, uh, the Events Industry Council is a federation of associations within the events industry council uh, within the events industry. And we really come together to tackle the issues that are bigger than any one association can address on their own. So things like professional standards and global certifications. And now, as incredibly important as, as it is, how we come together to accelerate action on all aspects of sustainability. I'll invite Yamas to tell us a little bit about the sustainable development world. Thank you, Mariela, and welcome everyone from, I presume, around, around the world. Um, Many of you may be familiar with the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, but for those who are not, maybe I'll offer a short primer. Um, many people enter sustainability with the view that it's really about the planet, and they're right. It is about the planet, and in fact, many of the SDGs 
uh, talk about protecting the planet. Number seven, clean water and sanitation. Number seven, affordable and clean energy. Number 13, climate action. But as you see from the icons, sustainability and sustainable development is about a lot more than that. It's about reaching a world with no poverty and zero hunger and good health, particularly salient for our moment. Uh, about peace, justice, and strong institutions. It's about responsible consumption. So in a way, the SDGs, which were created by the United Nations in 2015, serve as the framework for what we want to achieve in the world by 2030. That's as countries, as companies, as organizations, and as we're gonna talk about a lot today, events. Using this as a framework can be a very powerful way to focus your efforts and think about how to contribute to the world during your event. Um, maybe we could um, have a little interaction here by, in the chat, if you would share, if any of you out there have already formalized your approach to contributing to the SDGs during events, um, maybe just write a few examples, and um, I'll, I'll relay them if we get some um, get some good examples. But you're definitely seeing the SDGs rise as a primary frame framework for organizing our thinking vis-a-vis um, -vis sustainability. Uh, you may not know this, but you might already be contributing to the SDGs by being inclusive in a certain way at your event by being mindful of accessibility, by creating hybrid events that um, uh, that, that allow um, people to, to 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 read as well as hear, um, and, and really, there's a there's a wide range of activations you can make um, across the, the all 17 SDGs, or you can select one one or two. Um, it's really up to you how to how to use them. Seeing no um, chat, why don't we transition to Courtney to go deeper into the SDG targets? Yep, so each one of the SDG goals has many, many targets underneath it. So it's a combination of things that we can all work on that contribute to accomplishing the overall goal. And what you see here is a sampling of some that we've pulled out that are much more specific to our industry and really tie well into what we're doing as we're building our events day in and day out. And so these are some of the examples that we're gonna talk through as we go through the presentation, um, but you can always come back to this and look at this and read in more detail about what these are and how they can fit more into your program. And one thing that is definitely top of mind for all of us right now is on fighting communicable diseases. And so that's one of the focus areas that we've had at the Events Industry Council through our APEX uh, COVID-19 Business Recovery Task Force. And I have a slide coming up uh, in a little bit that uh, that shares some of the resources that we've put together. But in terms of, uh, of an example of how, uh, how some events are integrating new physical distancing pr practices and san sanitization practices, I'll, I'll Send it back to Courtney to share a little bit of a case study. Thanks, Mariella. We have been lucky enough to uh, produce a couple of programs over the last couple of months, and we've come up with some interesting ways to sort of tackle the physical distancing and yet still bring people together. And so these are just a few examples here. Um, we're limiting the number of people we're sitting at tables. We've uh, created plexiglass dividers uh, to use on communal tables so that people can still feel connected and sit together and talk and network, but still have that safe space from one another. And then we're also working with a lot of assigned seating when you're setting up more of a general session type of room. I think these are some good takeaways that we can consider because keeping our teams and our attendees safe and, and putting their well-being first is really where we all need to be, especially when we consider the SDG goal uh, for health and wellness. And then also, we want to always make sure that we're keeping front of mind our attendees and individuals' well-being. One of the best things we can do, especially in a time like this when we're dealing with a pandemic, is consider everyone's immune system and how best we can keep our immune systems strong and healthy. And what better way to do that than through exercise? It's one of the best things that we have out there. And kudos to IMEX 
not only over the years have they built and integrated um, a really interesting wellness program into their events, but here when we've transitioned into a digital world, uh, they started with Frankfurt, they've continued continued it now with, with this program. Um, they are doing their still running program, which is really cool and interactive and fun and in taking our health and well-being and keeping it at the forefront. So I just love what they're doing. It's a great example of everyone uh, looking for something as you're in this digital space. Back to you, Mariella. Great. Thank you. And as I mentioned, we do have lots of resources on our website. We've produced a meeting and event design guide. We have a hotel guide guidance. And most recently, we've issued one on workforce and wellness. Uh, so within that, you'll find a list of 15 job boards that have been put together by our member organizations and lots of resources uh, globally to support people with their, uh, with their wellness and well-being. So we thought uh, next we would uh, uh, switch gears a little bit and uh, talk about how you might be creating events uh, that reduce inequalities and support diversity and inclusion. So if we can bring um, bring the panel, um, or sorry, the poll question up, and maybe uh, you can share a little bit about some of the things that you're doing in your events to promote uh, diversity and inclusion. So we'll give that uh, a minute to, to populate. And then uh, if I could ask Richard to, um, to report back a little bit about some of the findings from the poll. Yep, hello. Yeah, it's, it's just a short delay as um, it runs through. So we've got a couple of uh, some answers coming through now. Um, it's just swapping around. So leading the way so far is supplier diversity. Um, Excellent. Uh, ed education content has taken the lead now, though it's switching all the time as people have got quite a lot of people on here. So it just takes a bit of time to go through. So we'll uh, let it run its course. And for anyone who's uh, entering other, it would be wonderful to see some of those comments being shared in the chat function. We'd love to uh, to hear about some of the ways that you're actively integrating uh, diversity and inclusion into the design of your events. OK, I think we've uh, it's starting to stabilize So, Number one, we have supplier diversity with 33 percent, followed by panel selection at 27 percent, education content and diverse committees, 16 and 18 percent, both now 18 percent. Um, so those are definitely the four marketing communications at three percent, a lot lower and other three percent. Um, they've actually switched again now. So it's all very even for those other four. Uh, so it seems like they're all as important as each other. Excellent. Wonderful. And I wanted to uh, to bring uh, up one example from one of our uh, member organizations, uh, Meeting Professionals International. And when they hosted uh, Global Meetings Industry Day, one of the things that they did was to provide real time uh, captioning and translation services uh, during the event. So you could uh, you could follow along um, in the language of your choice. So I thought that was um, that was really helpful to be able to really think through some of the needs and more and more as we look to um, to developing our, our uh, virtual hybrid digital events, we really need to be thoughtful about making sure that we're uh, being as attentive to accessibility in our virtual platforms as we are in our uh, live events. I uh, also um, wanted to share a little bit about um, you know, gender equality. And I think that you know, we, we obviously need to consider things like having gender balanced panels, thinking about inclusive language in our registration forms. Um, I love this, um, this example of you know, the, the, the washroom signs and making, uh, making them inclusive. And I'd really like you to, to, uh, to take the time to think through how you're uh, designing your events and are you promoting um, gender equality? One of the, the simple things that, um, that I find, I, I notice now every time is when a session starts with, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. That simple statement starts off by um, assigning gender as a binary term. And I would encourage you to think through, are there ways that we can be much more inclusive um, in our language as we work towards making our events more inclusive? Um, so with that, it would be great if we can um, have some comments shared in the chat function around how you are designing your virtual events to be more inclusive, accessible, and welcoming. So I'll give uh, give a moment for uh, for that to to start up.
Another um, aspect to um, to thinking through about accessibility for um, for our um, our events is to think about how you're um, you're describing your your images. So I think that that's one of the things as a speaker that I know I can definitely be um, be stronger about doing. So for example, on this slide that we're looking at here. I should be taking the time to describe that this is a, an image of uh, two chat boxes encouraging people to um, to enter their chat, uh, enter their comments into the chat. So, if, um, uh, Richard, are there comments that we should be sharing in the as part of the the conversation, or should I move on to the next topic? Yeah, they're just coming through. They're just being put into into your speaker chats. So, I think one's just come through now. Excellent. Uh, so we have one here that uh, yeah registration so including pronoun preference um, yeah. and or including more than just I guess Mr and Mrs or I guess taking away those fields completely. Um, so once you say Marilyn, this is wonderful advice about being aware of welcoming guests to make all feel inclusive. Great. Um, and then Great. yeah, identifying pronouns in speaker bios or as options as registration. So let's um, let's switch topics. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, talking about food waste, and I'll ask uh, Yalmas to come back and, and tell us about this uh, this area. Thanks, Mariela. But before I do, I want mine going back to the energy example. So some of you contributed, and thank you for that. There's an example from Sustainable Events Caribbean where they mentioned that as part of programming, they often include um, topics about how to advance sustainability during events in the Caribbean that supports SDG four quality education. And that's a really huge opportunity event planners have in general, uh, which is integrating messaging and communication about sustainability into your general programming. So you elevate broad understanding of these notions. Um, so more people are supportive of them. Uh, the second example was really about SDG 12 responsible consumption and production. And that's about reusing props and decor. So this um, uh, attendee mentioned that they take the same decor, the same props, and reuse them after you know event after event. Perfect example of responsible consumption, and um, as is often the case, saving money by uh, avoiding the need to repurchase. Um, let's now go to zero waste, sorry, uh, food waste and zero hunger SDG two. Now. It's a statement of the obvious to say we're in a kind of a different world at the moment. We're all mainly virtual, uh, but events are slowly coming back. And there's a great opportunity for event planners when we do go back to live to really think about zero hunger and how you can contribute to the destinations you're in, particularly ones where there is um, food insecurity issues. And that is, during your event, first you, you plan well, um, but then even when you plan well, you know, after many years of experience, many of you, I'm sure that there's gonna be some surplus after some surplus food. And the question is, what can the venue do uh, with that food? And are they, do they have relationships with food banks? Are they finding ways to donate? And the truth is there are, there are complexities to donating food but in contribution to Zero Hunger and Target 12.3 as well, having per capita food waste, we can, as an events industry, donate a lot more food than we have been in the past. And so maybe as we come back from COVID, um, you as planners can encourage your venues, um, as we experienced as MGM um, a number of years ago, a number of planners kept on asking us, you know, can you find alternatives to sending the food surplus to farms? And eventually, you know, after many decades of having an event in Las Vegas, we figured out six, you know, four or five years ago how to do it. And it's very complicated, but it's worth it. If you go to the next slide, please, Mariella. Um, we've managed, we managed to hit not only from events, but triggered by this program, donating food from events. We've just recently hit 2.3 million meals donated to people in need in the Las Vegas community uh, in the last three years. Again, it was triggered by event planners who encouraged us to work out how to donate food safely at the end of events. And um, you can't necessarily see it, but you may not realize that when you divert food um, and send it for donation to feed people in need, you're also contributing to less waste in landfill or in farms. 
And you're also contributing to uh, reducing climate change. In, in fact, reducing food waste is the number one most um, powerful solution to climate change. Um, there's, a, there's a study called Project Draw Drawdown, and it's a surprise, but as we reduce food waste, it's the main way we're going to address climate change. So figuring out how to encourage your venues to donate. This is another example. Um, beyond food, donating uh, equipment and, and PPE after or during COVID. Um, really, your know, venues take very significant roles in communities. So, so addressing the issues of the community, such as COVID right now, and thinking through what the community needs and uh, supporting the community is really, really important um, way for us to contribute as, as, as event industry. And next slide, please. Here's, here's a slightly different example and quite a fun one. Um, this is a, a, an IAC member in Sweden who, in support of this you know, notion of, 12, of um, substantially reducing waste generation, which is in support of SDG 12, they upcycled um, uh, signage into uh, into uniforms and very creative and and and, and fun um, and there's, there's lots of things you can do with with your decor and signage and, and find creative ways to repurpose materials in in different ways and the final slide in this short section is about this notion of circular economy now events have historically had a little bit of reputation as um, drivers of what is termed the linear economy, make, meaning take, make, and waste. There's one linear throughput of the materials. And this idea of circular economy uh, upends that notion by expressing that we need to keep try and keep materials at their best and highest use for as long as possible. So as resources come in, um, we want less to go into that waste stream and more to be recycled or composted or reused or donated um, or upcycled, just any method we can to keep that material at its highest and best use for as long as possible. Thank you. Great, thank you. So the, we're going to go back to uh, to doing a poll question here. So we'd like to uh, know a little bit about uh, your uh, your thoughts on um, how we can uh, best address the environmental impacts of trade shows specifically. So if you could select up to three of the following, and uh, it'll be very interesting to see the, the results. So looking to see which of the following you think have the greatest impact, things like booth construction and disposal, uh, booth and material freight, signage, carpet, uh, travel, hotel energy, producing food, uh, food waste, plastic bottles and lanyards and bags, and giveaways and swag. And when, once that uh, poll has had a chance to, uh, to, to get uh, stabilized, if Richard, you could uh, share the results. Yep, happy to. Uh, while that's doing, I just, obviously at IMEX, we try and be as sustainable as we can. And at uh, IMEX America last year, we got rid of all red meat at the show because as we all know red meat is very high in, in terms of sustainability mm. and water the amount of water needed to, to produce that so um as we were looking at all of these and everything that we can we have bamboo lany lanyards just to reduce the amount of um impact that we're having on on the environment for the show um i know ac across the across the years our, our friends in las vegas have been very supportive and we've come a long way over over the 10 years Okay, so it's starting to take shape here. So food waste is, is number one, 53% with, with food waste, closely followed by plastic bottles, lanyards and bags with 47. Uh, and then close, closely followed by attendee travel and booth construction at 38, 37%. And then around 25%, we have the booth and material freights, the carpet. Um, and then we move down to the producing food for the event and hotel and into use at ten, and signage at, at 10%. But the key key three are definitely food waste and plastic bottles, lanyards and, and bags um, and the booth construction and disposal. Excellent. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts on that. I'll pass it over to Courtney to tell us a little bit more on the climate action. Yep, uh, SDG 13 climate action is one that I think all of us can be highly focused on. 
much of what Yalmez was talking about really relates back to this. And then there's so many additional things that you can look at. But the UN created the Climate Neutral Now program that, that really dives in and gives you more detail. Um, but it's essentially challenging us to really measure what our carbon footprint is at all of our programs, challenging us to identify areas where we can reduce our carbon impact at those programs, and then looking at how we offset the carbon that we just can't avoid. Um, and one thing to note is, you know, we we are getting a lot of examples today uh, uh, for live events when we're meeting face to face, and and there's ways that we can reduce our carbon through food choices and transportation cho transportation choices and things. But don't forget that your digital event that we're all participating in right now also has a carbon footprint. So it's important to think about and still consider your sustainability efforts and how you're addressing your sustainability efforts, even though we're currently working in this digital space. So, you know, think about how you can use um, the, the less of the high definition streaming and maybe other types of streaming um, to save a little bit on your electric. Um, think about powering down your um, items that you don't need, really have some good conversations with your providers, and then look at ways to still offset uh, what your carbon footprint may be. Um, and the next slide we're going to touch on and talk a little bit about human trafficking, which relates back to uh, goal 16, which is peace, justice, and strong institutions. The events industry as a whole has a real opportunity to make an impact when it comes to eradicating human trafficking. Um, we as planners, you know, Yana's mentioned this as well. We are, we have the ability to really be drivers in the industry by asking for our partners and our venues and our hoteliers and our suppliers to be aware of and put trainings and things in place to ensure that their teams are helping to fix some of these issues that we have out there in the world. And so if you're putting into your RFP with all of your suppliers and, and hotels and venues, that their staff needs to be trained to know the signs of human trafficking. Um, that is a way for more and more people to be knowledgeable on this topic and then to help stop it. Another interesting thing to do here is to also arm your attendees. Really start to consider if you can add in a training session and give your attendees that knowledge as well. And so as they're traveling to and from your programs throughout the year and they're in and out of airports and hotels, they too can look for the signs of human trafficking and then help put an end to it. Mariella, I think we're going back to you. Great, thank you. So just in terms of some, uh, some last thoughts before we go to the Q&A, when you're looking at uh, integrating the sustainable development goals into your event design, I think that one of the things that's most helpful is to start by really having a sense as to where your event or organization have the most significant impact. And then think about from there how you can achieve um, you know, acceleration towards the SDGs through the way that you design your events, uh, through the choices that you make. Every design decision that we make as event organizers has a sustainability impact. So making sure that you are making a really smart um, decision around what, what to select for your events. And then finally, when you're looking at all of the all of the different options, really think through where can you have the most, uh, the most impact and prioritize those actions. So if you're looking for additional resources, please visit our website, eventscouncil.org. You'll find our sustainable event standards, uh, lots of webinar content, uh, principles for sustainable events, an annual state of sustainability survey, and lots of uh, practical infographics that will give you ideas of, um, of how you can implement uh, sustainable practices in your events. And with that, we'll um, pass it over to, uh, to Richard to, uh, at, to facilitate any questions that, that you may have. Cool. Thanks, Mariana. Thanks, everyone. Uh, great session. I know I've learned a lot about how you know, just small steps can make such a massive difference. Um, we have got uh, yeah, quite a few questions in. The, by far the most popular um, on the chat is how will sustainability efforts be affected by COVID-19? Um, obviously, the rise in single use plastic and the individual wrapping that you may have to have now moving forward for events. Um, is there anything you can tell us and how we can sort of mitigate that extra packaging? Who would like to start with that one? I'll, I'll go ahead and start with, with this one. So um, I think that there, of course, there, there will be some additional um, single use items that, that are being used right now. Uh, there's also a reduction in single use items in other areas. So I think that we really need to be thoughtful about thinking, you know, 
are there items that are really necessary from a, um, a health and safety perspective? And, um, and then balance that, looking and seeing where can you make reductions in other areas? Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that we will be needing to think through is, um, is what's going to happen with the plexiglass um, that, that is being used uh, quite significantly. All of this is really important right now, uh, but then what, what's going to be the plan for the next stage? Uh, can those, uh, if you're producing them for an event, can they be donated to, uh, to a resource that could use them following your event? So thinking through some of those. Courtney Yamas. Yeah, I'll supplement by saying that the priority right now for the world is safety. And so I agree with Mariella, and at the moment there will be an increase in single-use plastic, particularly gloves, for example, and some degree masks. And the, the methods that we're going to be using in time are, are, are really reusable masks as we, as we can, um, finding compostable material streams so that we can take back and, and compost those materials. Um, but I think the truth is for, for a while during COVID, we're, we're going to have a slight increase in, in single-use plastics and recognize that as we support safety and focus on safety, we are contributing to the SDGs, just a different, different one. Um, again, long-term, we will continue, all of us as, as the industry, to reduce and remove um, Single plastics ultimately, because that's the you will, will protect the ocean and, and rivers and waterways. But again, for the moment, uh, accepting a, a slight worsening of that uh, issue on single use plastics, I think is is par for the course given the safety focus of the world. Yeah, I, I agree. Oh, sorry, Courtney. Yeah, off to you. I was just going to say, I I think now is a really nice time for us to, to maybe just shift our focus a bit. You know, the, the answers given have really been more about environmental sustainability versus some of the social sustainability uh, issues that we can look at and address. And so if we really think about inclusion and diversity and equity and, um, and being just more gender neutral, and we kind of look at and examine and dissect our programs in, in that lens and then bring them back to life, I think we're going to have the time right now to focus on those pieces that maybe we haven't had as much of a chance to focus on in the past. So I, I kind of direct it back out as a challenge to say, um, your sustainability efforts right now aren't aren't over because of a lot of single use plastic. They're just shifting for the moment, and it's allowing you to focus on some of these other areas uh, where you can strengthen your sustainability efforts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I like like you said, it's just looking at everything at um, from all angles and doing what you can. And uh, like I said, safety will always come first, but then maybe offset that somewhere else with one of the other goals. Um, if we've got time for one one last question. Um, and it's which of the SDGs is the hardest to address for the events industry, um, in, in your opinion? So if we go to I don't know, Yao Maz, if we come to you first and then. Sure. Um, I don't think there's a particular, there's a single SDG that's hardest to address. I think the events industry can contribute depending on the nature of your event, depending on the destination. We can, as an industry, contribute to every one of the SDGs. I think the hardest thing is to choose the ones you want to focus on for your event and, and be very deliberate about selecting where you can contribute and um, develop innovative programs that actually move the needle. Um, so that's what I'd say. Step back, prioritize, and, and decide how you're going to use your event to deliver the maximum good. Perfect. Thanks. So, thanks so much for, for that. Um, unfortunately, we, we've run out of time. I know we could have probably had a and a for about the next two hours and, and still not got, got through everything. There are quite a few questions coming through and I had loads of my own questions ready to ask you guys. So uh, we'll have to welcome you back um, at IMEX ne um, ne in the future to, to speak for us. But uh, with that, I'd just like to say thank you to you all, our amazing panel, Courtney, Yalmaz and Mariella. Uh, and for all of you joining us today, I know I've certainly lot, uh, learned a lot about how just making small steps and changes can make such a massive difference and how we just got to look at everything from, from all, all angles. Um, just so you're all aware, this has, session has been recorded, so you can watch it on demand after uh, this session um, and share it with, with anyone else who, who may have missed it, because I think it's been an unbelievable session. But for now, um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day here on Planet IMEX, and thank you and goodbye. Thank you.
Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.